everyone, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. A warm affectionate greeting to all of you out there in cyberspace. You know, Srila Prabhupada explained to us that the soul is actually a social being. In the spiritual world we have families and we have so many activities and social activities. Of course, there Krishna is in the center 100%. But the nature is there and therefore in holiday seasons, now we're in the holiday season, just past the Thanksgiving, coming up to Christmas, you know, families get together, you know, students go back from their, from their, you know, staying away at college to, to visit family. And this COVID has just taken all of that, either taken it out or caused chaos when they're trying to go back and increasing the spread of this horrible virus. So I was just thinking, you know, after last night's readings, it was so wonderful that when I'm with you all, even though we're just in cyberspace together, uh, we're not physically together, but that need uh, of family affection and family uh, doing fam things together with family is perfectly satisfied by this hearing and chanting that we do together and then d discussing it afterwards. So we are very lucky and we should continue to feel uh, lucky and cultivate that feeling. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he <clears throat> felt very strong feelings toward uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and he expressed them in this uh, poetic way. In due course, Maha Pralaya, devastating floods, will inundate the entire universe. If you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or, if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam, but under no circumstances release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, for if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage, because after the flood has subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda So, we reached the 23rd chapter of the Madhya Leela of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his teachings to Sanatan Goswami. And this is the first, second, this is the third chapter of his teachings. It makes such a big chunk of the verses uh, and chapters of Chaitanya Charitamrita. This chapter is titled, entitled Life's Ultimate Goal, Love of Godhead. So he's going progressively through the science of devotional service. The following summary of the 23rd chapter <clears throat> is given by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Amrita Pravaha Bhasha. In this chapter, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes the symptoms of emotion and love and the awakening of one's original loving relationship with the Lord, as well as the characteristics of a devotee who has actually attained that stage. 
He then describes the gradually increase, the gradual increase of love of God up to the point of Mahabhava. He then describes the five divisions of attraction and how they continue. He also describes the mellow derived from conjugal love, which is the supreme emotion. Conjugal love is divided into two categories, Swakya and Parakya. Swakya refers to loving affairs between husband and wife, and Parakya refers to loving affairs between two lovers. There are a number of descriptions in this connection. There is also a description of the 64 transcendental qualities of Krishna and the 25 transcendental qualities of Srimati Radharani. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then describes those candidates uh, who are eligible to taste the mellows of devotional service, their fundamental natures and the varieties and their fundamental natures and their varieties are also described. The Lord also informs Sanatan Goswami about all the confidential paraphernalia of devotional service. He gives a description of Goloka Vrindavan, where the Lord is engaged in his eternal pastimes described in the Hari Bhangsha. There is also an opposing description and favorable description of Kesha avatar. All these in instructions are mentioned herein. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed Sanatan Goswami, placing his hand, hand on his head. Thus, Sanatan received the power to describe these subjects in books like Hari Bhakti Vilas. Text 1. The most munificent Supreme Personality of Godhead, known as Gora Krishna, distributed to everyone, even the lowest of men, his own confidential treasury in the form of the nectar of love of himself <clears throat> and the holy name. This was never given to the people at any time before. I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Text 2. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Acharya. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, Now hear, O Sanatan, about the result of devotional service which is love of Godhead, life's ultimate goal. One who hears this description will be enlightened in the transcendental mellows of devotional service. 4. When affection for Krishna becomes deeper, one attains love of Godhead in devotional service. Such a position is called stai bhava, permanent enjoyment of the mellows of devotional service to Krishna. Text 5 Shuddha Sattva Vishesh Atma Prema Suryang Shu Samya Bhak Ruchibish Chitima Shrinya Krit Asau Baba Uchite When devotional service is executed on the transcendental platform of pure goodness, it is like a sun ray of love for Krishna. At such a time, devotional service causes the heart to be softened by various tastes, and one is then situated in bhava, emotion. Purport This verse is found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 131. 6. Bhava, emotion, has two different symptoms, constitutional and marginal. Now, my dear Sanatan, listen to the symptoms of love. 
purport. The word Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma means situated on the transcendental platform of pure goodness. In this way the soul is purified of all material contamination and this position is called Surup Lakshana. The constitutional symptom of bhava, emotion. By various tastes, one's heart is softened and there is an awakening of one's loving propensity to render spontaneous service to the Lord. This is called Tatashta Lakshana, the marginal symptom of bhava. Text 7 When that bhava softens the heart completely, becomes endowed with great feeling of possessiveness in relation to the Lord and becomes very much condensed and intensified. It is called prema, love of Godhead. By learned scholars. Purport. This verse is also found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.4.1. When one develops an unflinching sense of ownership or possessiveness in relation to Lord Vishnu, or in other words, when one thinks Vishnu and no one else to be the object of such love, the only object of such love, such an awakening is called bhakti, devotion, by exalted persons like Bhishma, Prahlad, Uddhava, and Narda. Purport. This verse quoted from the Narda Pancharatra is found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 142. Text 9. If by good fortune a living entity develops faith in Krishna, he begins to associate with devotees. Text 10. Sadhu Sangha Hoi Te Hoi Shavana Kirtana Sadhana Bhakti Hoi Saranartha Nivartana When one is encouraged, when one is encouraged in devotional service by the association of devotees, one becomes free from all unwanted contamination by following the regulated principles and chanting and hearing. Text 11. When one is freed from all unwanted contamination, he advances with firm faith. When firm faith in devotional service awakens, a taste for hearing and chanting also awakens. Text 12. After taste is awakened, a deep attachment arises, and from that attachment, the seed of love for Krishna grows in the heart. 13. When that ecstatic emotional stage intensifies, it is called love of Godhead. Such love is life's ultimate goal and the reservoir of all pleasure. Purport. <clears throat> Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur summarizes this growth of love of Godhead as a gradual process. A person becomes interested in devotional service by some good fortune. Eventually, he becomes interested in pure devotional service without material contamination. At that point, a person wants to associate with devotees. As a result of this association, he becomes more and more interested in discharging devotional service and hearing and chanting. The more one is interested in hearing and chanting, the more he is purified of material contamination. Shall I read that again? Is it okay? Oh, all right. Uh, the more one is interested in hearing and chanting, the more he is purified of material contamination. Liberation from material contamination is called anartha nivriti indicating a diminishing of all unwanted things. 
This is the test of development in devotional service. If one actually develops the devotional attitude, he must be freed from the material contamination of illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and meat-eating. These are the preliminary symptoms. When one is freed from all material contamination, his firm faith in devotional service awakens. When firm faith awakens, develops, a taste arises, and by that taste one becomes attached to devotional service. When this attachment intensifies, the seed of love of Krishna fructifies. This position is called priti or rati, affection, or bhava, emotion. When rati intensifies, it is called love of Godhead. This love of Godhead is actually life's highest perfection and the reservoir of all pleasure. Thus, devotional life is divided into two stages, sadhana-bhakti and bhava-bhakti. Sadhana-bhakti refers to the development of devotional service through the regulated principles. The basic principle for the execution of devotional service is faith. Above that, there is association with devotees, and after that, there is initiation by a bona fide spiritual master. After initiation, when one follows the regulated principles of devotional service, one becomes freed from all unwanted things. In this way, one becomes firmly fixed and gradually tender service and, and gradually In this way, one becomes firmly fixed and gradually develops a taste for devotional service. The more the taste grows, the more one desires to render service to the Lord. In this way, one becomes attached to a particular mellow in the Lord's service, Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, or Madura. As a result of such attachment, Bhava develops. Bhava Bhakti is the platform of purified goodness. By such purified goodness, one's heart melts in devotional service. Bhava Bhakti is the first seed of love of Godhead. This emotional stage <clears throat> is there. This emotional stage is there before one attains pure love. When that emotional stage intensifies, it is called Prema Bhakti or transcendental love of Godhead. <clears throat> this, gradual, this gradual process is also described in the following two verses which are found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1, 4, 15 and 16. Adao shadha tatak sadhu sangha tadasango tabhajana kriya tato narta niriti syat Tato nishta ruchish tata ha. Ata saktish tato bhavas tatak prema yudanchiti. Sadakanam ayam premna. Prardu bhave bhavet kramaha. In the beginning there must be faith. Then one becomes interested in associate, associating with pure devotees. Thereafter, one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulated principles under his orders. Thus one is freed from all unwanted habits and becomes firmly fixed in devotional service. Thereafter, one develops taste and attachment. This is the way of sadhana bhakti, the execution of devotional service according to the regulated principles. Gradually emotions intensify and finally there is an awakening of love. This is the gradual development of love of Godhead for the devotee interested in Krishna consciousness. Text 16 Sitam prasangam mamavirya sampido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kataha tajjoshanat ashavabharga Vartmani, 
śraddhāvṛtir bhaktir anukramiṣyati <coughs> The spiritually powerful method of method <coughs> excuse me the spiritual powerful message of godhead can be properly discussed only in a society of devotees and it is greatly pleasing to hear in that association if one hears from devotees the way of transcendental experience gradually opens and gradually become attains one attains I'll read that again. The spiritually powerful message of Godhead can be properly discussed only in a society of devotees, and it is greatly pleasing to hear in that association. If one hears from devotees, the way of transcendental experience quickly opens, and gradually one attains firm faith that in due course develops into attraction and devotion. Purport. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 3.25.25, text 17. <clears throat> if one actually if one actually has the seed of transcendental emotion in his heart, the symptoms will be visible in his activities. That is the verdict of all revealed scriptures. Chantir Avyartha Kalatvam Viraktir Mana Shunyata Asha Banda Samutkanta Nama Gane Sada Ruchihi Asaktis Tad Gunakyane Pritis Tad Vasati Stale Ityadayo Nubhava Sure Jata Bhavan Kure Jane When the seed of ecstatic emotion for, for Krishna fructifies, the following nine symptoms manifest in one's behavior Forgiveness, concern that time should not be wasted, detachment, absence of false prestige. Hope, eagerness, a taste for chanting the holy name of the Lord, attachment to, this, to, the, to descriptions of the transcendental qualities of the Lord, and affection for those places where the Lord resides, that is, a temple or a holy place, like Vrindavan. These are all called Anubhava, subordinate signs of ecstatic emotion. They are visible in a person in whose heart the seed of love of God has begun to fructify. Purport These two verses are found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1, 3, 25 and 26. Text 20 If love for Krishna in a seedling state has fructified in one's heart, one is not agitated by material things. 21. O Brahmanas, just accept me as a completely surrendered soul and let Mother Ganges, the representative of the Lord, always also accept me in that way. For I have already taken the lotus feet of the Lord into my heart. Let the snake bird or whatever magical thing the Brahmana created bite me at once. I only desire that you all continue singing the deeds of Lord Vishnu. This is purport. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 119.15 spoken by Maharaj Parikshit while he was sitting on the bank of the Ganges expecting to be bitten by a snake bird summoned by the curse of a Brahmin boy named Sringi who was the son of a great sage named Shamika. Shamika. News of the curse was conveyed to the king who prepared for his imminent death. Many great saintly persons, sages, brahmanas, kings and demigods came to see him in his last days. Maharaj Parikshit, however, was not at all afraid of being bitten by the snake bird. 
Indeed, he requested all the great personalities assembled to continue chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu. Text 22 Not a moment should be lost. Every moment should be utilized for Krishna or connected with him. Purport Maharaj Pariksit's expression of anxiety is explained in this verse. He says, Let whatever is destined to happen take place. It doesn't matter. Just let me see that not a moment of my time is wasted without a relationship with Krishna. One has to tolerate all obstacles on the path of Krishna consciousness and one has to see that not a moment of his life is, wa is wasted outside of Krishna's service. 23 With their words they offer prayers to the Lord. With their minds they always remember the Lord. With their bodies they offer obeisances to the Lord. Despite all these activities, they are still not satisfied. This is the nature of pure devotees. Shedding tears from their eyes, they dedicated their whole lives to the Lord's service. Purport This verse is from Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. This verse from the Hari Bhakti Sudodaya is found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.3.29. In the material field, people are interested in material enjoyment, mystic power, and sense gratification. But these things do not appeal to the devotee at all. Text 25 King Bharat was very eager to attain the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, who is called Uttama Shloka, because poems and prayers are offered to him for his favor. In his youth, King Bharat gave up his attractive wife and children, as well as his beloved friends, an opulent kingdom, just as one gives up stool after passing it. Purport These are the signs of virakti, detachment, found in a person who has developed bhava, the preliminary stage of love of Godhead. This verse is quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam 5.14.43 Text 26 Although a pure devotee's standard is above all, he still considers himself to be in the lowest stage of life. 27. King Bhagarad, uh, King Bhagarad, always uh, King Bhagarata always carried affection for Krishna within his heart. Although Bhagarata Maharaj was a crown, was the crown jewel of kings. He was still wandering about and begging alms in the city of his enemies. He was even offering respect to chandalas, low-class men who eat dogs. Purport. This is a quotation from the Padma Purana. Text 28 A fully surrendered devotee always hopes that Lord Krishna will be kind to him. This hope is very firm in him. Text 29 hmm. Na prema shavanadi bhaktir apiva yogo tava vaishnavo jnanam va shupakarma va kiyadaho saj jatir apyastiva
O my Lord, I do not have any love for you, nor am I qualified for discharging devotional service by chanting and hearing, nor do I possess the mystic power of a Vaishnava, knowledge or pious activities, nor do I belong to a very high caste family. On the whole, I do not possess anything. Still, O beloved of the gopis, because you bestow your mercy on the most fallen, I, I have an unbreakable hope that is constantly in my heart. That hope is always giving me pain. Purport This verse by Sanatana Goswami is quoted in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.3.35 Text 30 This eagerness is chiefly characterized by an ardent desire to associate with the Lord. O Krishna, O flute player, the sweetness of your early age is wonderful within these three worlds. You know my unsteadiness, and I know yours. No one else knows about this. I want to see your beautiful, attractive face somewhere in a solitary place. But how can this be accomplished? Purport. This is a verse from Krishna, the Kish, Krishna Karnamrita 32. Text 32. Due to, due to having great relish for the holy name, one is inclined to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra constantly. 33. O Govinda, this, this youthful girl named Radhika is today constantly pouring forth tears like nectar falling from flowers as she sings your holy names in a sweet voice. Purport. This verse is found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.3. 38. Text 34. At this stage of bhava, a devotee has awakened the tendency to chant and describe the transcendental qualities of the Lord. He has attachment for this process. Text 35. Maduram maduram vapur asya vibor. Maduram maduram vadanam maduram. Madugandhi Mridu Smitame Tadaho Maduram 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 O my Lord, the transcendental body of Krishna is very sweet and His face is even sweeter than His body but His soft smile, which has the fragrance of honey is sweeter still. Purport this is a verse from Bilva Mangal Thakur's Krishna Karnamrita 92, text 36. A devotee absorbed in ecstatic emotion for Krishna always resides in a place where Krishna's pastimes were, pe were performed. Text 37. O Lord Pundarikaksha, while chanting your holy name with tears in my eyes, when shall I dance in ecstasy on the bank of the Yamuna? Purport. This verse is found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 2, 156. These are the symptoms of a person who has developed attraction, bhava, for Krishna. Now let me describe the symptoms of a person who is actually elevated to love of Krishna. O Sanatan, please hear this from me. Text 39 Even the most learned man cannot understand the words, activities and symptoms of a person situated in love of Godhead. Text 40. Even, the most, even a most learned scholar cannot understand the activities and symptoms of an exalted personality in whose heart love of Godhead has awakened. 
purport. This verse is also found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.4.17. When a person is actually advanced and takes pleasure in chanting the holy name of the Lord, who is very dear to him, he is agitated and loudly chants the holy name. He also laughs, cries, becomes agitated, and chants just like a madman, not caring for outsiders. When a person is purport, this verse is quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.40. Text 42. <clears throat> Love of Godhead increases <clears throat> and is manifested as affection, counter-love, love, attachment, sub-attachment, ecstasy, and sublime ecstasy. Text 43 This development is compared to sugarcane seeds, sugarcane plants, sugarcane juice, molasses, crude sugar, refined sugar, sugar candy, and rock candy. Text 44 one should understand that just as the taste of sugar increases as it, as it is gradually purified, so when love of Godhead increases from rati, which is compared to the beginning seed, its taste increases. Text 45 According to the candidate, possessing these transcendental qualities, sneha, mana, and so on, there are five transcendental mellows, neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parental love, and conjugal love. Purport In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1, 3, 41, 4, and 44, rati, is attraction, is thus described. Vyaktam Masrinite vantar lakshate rati lakshanam mamukshu prabrinitam ched babet esharatir nahi kintu bala shamat kada kari touch china bikshaya abhigena subodo yam ratyabasa prakirtitaha. The real symptom. <coughs> of the fructification of the seed of love, rati, are manifested because the heart is melted. When such symptoms are found among speculators, speculators and fruitive actors, they cannot be accepted as real symptoms of attachment. Foolish people, without knowledge of devotional service, praise such symptoms of attachment even when they are based on something other than a desire to serve Krishna. However, one who is expert in devotional service calls such symptoms ratyabhasa, a mere glimpse of attachment. Text 46 These five transcendental mellows exist permanently. The devotee may be attracted to one of these mellows and thus he becomes happy. Krishna also becomes inclined towards such a devotee and comes under his control. Purport In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 251, Stai Baba, permanent ecstasy, is thus described. Abhirudan Vidurangscha Bhavan yo vachatam nayan su rajeva virajeta sastai sastai bhava uchate sastai bhava uchate stai bhavo trasa prokta shri krishna vishayavritihi the mood bhava that brings under the control the mood bhava that brings under control the favorable ecstasies such as laughing and unfavorable ecstasies 
such as anger, ruling over them like a king, is called stai bhava, or permanent ecstasy. In this connection, continuous ecstatic love for Krishna is called permanent ecstasy. Text 47 When the permanent ecstasies, neutrality, servitorship, and so on, are mixed with other ingredients, devotional service and love of God, it is transformed and becomes composed of transcendental mellows. Purport In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, one, a two, one, four, and five, the following definition is given. Love for Krishna, Keshava, as previously described, reaches the supreme state of being composed of mellows when its ingredients are fulfilled. By means of vibhava, anubhava, sattvika, and vyabhichari, hearing and chanting are activated and the devotee is able to taste love for Krishna. Then, attachment for Krishna or permanent ecstasy, stai bhava, becomes the mellow of devotional service, bhakti rasa. And I'll stop our reading tonight. It's eight o'clock. I got it. I got. I started a little late. Let's go on for some more. Mm. Text forty-eight. <clears throat> <clears throat> Permanent ecstasy becomes more and more relishable. Mm. Permanent ecstasy becomes a more and more relishable transcendental mellow through the mixture of special ecstasy, subordinate ecstasy, natural ecstasy, and transitory ecstasy. <clears throat> 49. Yogurt mixed with sugar candy, black pepper, and camphor, is very palatable and tasty. Similarly, when permanent ecstasy mixes with other ecstatic symptoms, it becomes unprecedentedly tasty. <laughs> Text 50 There are two kinds of particular ecstasies, vibhava, one is called the support and the other is called the awakening. The vibration of Krishna's flute is an example of the awakening and Lord Krishna himself is an example of the support. This is called Utipan and Alambana. Utipan means the awakening, what awakens. And alamba means the support. Krishna's flute is a udipan, something that reminds, that awakens uh, one's feelings. And Krishna is the support of those feelings. Text 51. The subordinate ecstasies. The subordinate ecstasies are smiling, dancing, and singing as well as different manifestations in the body. The natural ecstasies, such as being stunned, are considered among the subordinate ecstasies, anubhava. Purport In the Bhakti Prasamrita Sindhu, vibhava is described as follows. Because bringing about the tasting of love for Krishna is called vibhava. Vibhava is divided into two categories. Alambana, support, and Udipana, awakening. In the Agni Purana, it is stated, that which causes love for Krishna to appear is called Vibhava. That has two divisions, 
alambana, in which love appears, and udipana, by which love appears. Hmm. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 2116, the following is stated about alambana. The object of love is Krishna, and the container of that love is the devotee of Krishna. Learned scholars call them alambana, the foundations. Similarly, udipana is described as follows. Those things which awaken ecstatic love are called udipana. Mainly, this awakening is made possible by the qualities and activities of Krishna, as well as by his mood, his mode of decoration and the way his hair is arranged. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu one two, I mean two one, three o one. The Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu two one three o two also gives the following further examples of udipana. Krishna's smile, the fragrance of his transcendental body, his flute, bugle, ankle bells, and conch shell, the marks on his feet, his place of residence, his favorite plant, tulsi, his devotees, and the observance of fasts and vows connected to his devotion all awaken the symptoms of ecstatic love. The Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 221 describes Anubhava as follows. The many external ecstatic symptoms or bodily transformations which indicate ecstatic emotions in the mind and which are also called Udbhavas, Udbhasvara, Udbhasvara are the Anubhavas or subordinate ecstatic expressions of love. Some of these symptoms are dancing, falling down, and rolling on the ground, singing and crying very loudly, bodily contortions, loud vibrations, yawning, deep breathing, disregard for others, and frothing of saliva, mad laughter, spitting, hiccups, and other similar symptoms, not to be imitated. All these symptoms are divided into two divisions, shita and chepana. Singing, yawning, and so on are called shita. Dancing and bodily contortions are called chepana. In his Anubhasha, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur quotes the following verse from the Vedic literature describing Udbhasvara. The ecstatic symptoms manifest in the external body of a person in ecstatic love are called Udbhasura by learned scholars. Some of these are a slackening of the belt and a dropping of clothes and hair. Others are bodily contortions, yawning, a trembling of the front, front portion of the nostrils, heavy breathing, hiccuping and falling down and rolling on the ground. These are the external manifestations of emotional love. Stamba and other symptoms are described in Majalila 14.167. Text 52 There are other ingredients beginning with complete despondency and jubilation Altogether, there are 33 varieties of these transitory, opposing elements, and when they combine, the mellow becomes very wonderful. Purport Nirveda, Harsha, and other symptoms are explained in Majulila 14.167. The opposing elements, Vyabhichari, are described in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 2.4. 1 through 3 as follows there are 33 transitory opposing elements 
known as Vyabhichari, ecstatic emotions. They oppose the permanent sentiments while simultaneously assisting them in special ways. They are to be known by words, by different symptoms seen in the limbs and in other parts of the body, and by the peculiar conditions of the heart. Because they set in motion the progress of the permanent sentiments, they are specifically called sanchari, or impelling principles. These impelling principles rise up and fall back in the permanent sentiments of ecstatic love, like waves in an ocean of ecstasy. Consequently, they are called vyabhichari. And that's a good stopping place, Hare Krishna. Next we'll talk about, Lord Chaitanya will talk about the five transcendental mellows. Hare Krishna. So this is a very, very deep subject and some of these concepts are very difficult to understand unless we actually have gone forward in our devotional lives to a certain extent. And as we have gone forward, we will be able to understand them to that extent. And there's some, there's no English words to describe these things more than describing them with different moods and emotions that we experience here. But they are different, completely different. Like these opposing, you know, things. They, they like the yawning and the the spitting and the throb, frothing of the mouth and I mean Lord Chaitanya later on will hear and, and will see through hearing Lord Chaitanya exhibit all of these symptoms to the maximum degree and only Lord Chaitanya and the most intimate associates of Krishna in the spiritual world can exhibit these symptoms no one else. So our duty is to hear about them and be, uh, how to say, amazed and, yeah, gobsmacked, I guess you could say. And that will take us there. Just to be able to hear and appreciate them and to appreciate that there's something completely different than the ordinary symptoms of hiccups and rolling on the ground and all these things, yelling, crying. These, these symptoms, you know, in the material world, they're, they're symptoms of either madness or, you know, somebody who's out of control or whatever, and, and suffering. The person who goes through them, they suffer. But in these symptoms in the spiritual world, there is no suffering. There's just extreme feelings of ecstatic emotion in the heart. Okay, I'll stop there. And we'll take reflections, comments, discussions, whatever. There's a question from yesterday's reading from Brajbalaba. Okay, Brajbalaba, from yesterday's readings. Yeah, yes. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. A question about the reading from yesterday. Does it mean we should learn about the Lord's associates in Vrindavan and learn and attempt to emulate their mood as we are attracted? This was not sure. Yes, but that cannot be imitated. We cannot force it. The, I, you can't try to be like that. It's not a mental thing. It comes from practicing 
the processes of devotional service which have been described before and practicing them and practicing them and practicing them until the heart becomes purified, until there's a natural attraction for these things, especially if you're hearing and chanting. That's the beginning, as we heard. When you're, when you're attached to hearing and chanting, when you like it a lot, uh, that's the beginning stage. Then, it, then when you hear in that stage these pastimes and these instructions and these expl- explanations of the science of devotional service again and again and again, then there's a natural awakening within the heart. In, in the uh, fourth chapter of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, there was a, in, in the 34th verse purport, there was a statement by Prabhupada that a special natural appreciation of certain pastimes for, of Krishna indicate the natural relationship of the soul for Krishna. But the key words are natural and special. They're not that you can try to do that. The attempt to try to do that is very seriously dealt with by the Acharyas. Prabhupada actually once said, if you try to be a gopi, you're a mayavadi. Just like if you try to be Krishna, you're a mayavadi. So if you try to be a gopi, or Shimati Radharani, or Rubin Yashoda, you, you, that's mayavad. You can't try to be those persons. So the the bridge, the bridge, is to want to be a servant of those persons. Sin- genuinely, spontaneously, want to be a servant of those persons. It's not the same as seeing, you know, a flashy car that you've been, you know, hankering for you know, drive by and you get, yeah, yeah, I want that, I want that, you know. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's something that has to come from within the core of the heart deeply from the purification that comes from the activities of pure devotional service in practice. That means with the body, with the senses. So, what we should do is we should, uh, as we as it, as it, it actually this description describes it from the beginning to the end, and you can't pu- pull it out from the end and say I should do this. You have to take the steps, the symptoms from the very beginning, and you have to get those fixed. They have to be assimilated in your in your day-to-day life and then from there into your heart and from there the heart will melt when you chant and hear and from there all these symptoms will come and you'll feel naturally attracted. And the process is to hear, chant, follow the regular principles and keep hearing the Bhagavatam over and over again. And this Chaitanya Charitamrita it is the culmination. The culmination. So, what do we do? We hear and we appreciate. We hear, we develop a, 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 a liking for it and an attachment to hear about those things. We try to understand, but we don't try to imitate you know, and jump to being attracted to Krishna in a certain relationship before our heart is clean. And what are the symptoms? Do you remember the symptoms in the beginning? You become detached. You cannot waste any time. You become very forgiving. All those symptoms that we heard you know, when, the, when, when these feelings are beginning to awaken, externally, that's what happens. You'll become very attached to chanting. Not just you like it, but you'll become very attached to chanting and hearing. 
what was that verse? Um, I think I wrote it down in my book, but I can't, I can't remember the number of the verse. But we just read it during this reading. The external symptoms. Do you remember? Uh, let me see, what verse are we on? Here? We are on 53. Maybe it was, yeah. See if you can find it. Huh? Nine symptoms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What number is it? Eighteen and nineteen. Eighteen and nineteen. Yeah, that's the very beginning. We're fifty-three verses in. This is only eighteen and nineteen. When the seed of ecstatic emotion for Krishna is fructifies, the following nine symptoms manifest in one's behavior: forgiveness. Concern that time should not be wasted, detachment, absence of false prestige, hope, eagerness, a taste for chanting the holy name of the Lord, attachment to descriptions of the transcendental qualities of the Lord, and affection for those places where the Lord resides. These are all called Anubhava. So this science has to be studied deeply. It's not that we can just hear it casually and then, you know, decide what we're going to do. You know, we have to purify our hearts by the Cheto Dharpana Marjana, Baba Maha Davagni Nirapana, Shaira Kailava Chandrika Vitaranam, Vidyavadu Jivanam, Anandam Bodhi Vardhanam, Pradipadam the glories of the holy name. Purify the heart by offenseless chanting. That's the beginning. If you can't chant without offense, you can't expect to understand these higher things. But Prabhupada gave these gave us these books, and it's not that we shouldn't hear them. We should hear them again and again and try to appreciate or appreciate them. And then gradually it will come. I mean, I've been reading this book, you know, a lot for a long time, and still I'm just beginning to touch it, you know, and be able to explain a little bit about these things. So it's a, it's a, it's a lifetime project. (laughs) Hare Krishna. Question from Krishna Premavati. Krishna Prima, Primavati, Hare Krishna. She says, Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. On text 19, can you please elaborate on the absence of false prestige? Maybe some examples. You don't, you're not proud. False prestige means you become. Uh, proud of having a position, proud of being a certain, uh, from a certain country, proud of being from a certain social uh, status, proud of material designations. Prestige, false prestige. What does the word prestige mean? Huh? What does the word prestige mean? (laughs) 
prestige means that when one is uh, admired, when, when, one, when one has false prestige, he wants to be admired by others. He wants to attain a position or he wants his ambition is to do something that will, that will cause others to uh, admire him or her. So freedom from false prestige means that one is not uh, interested in that at all. There's no desire for admiration, distinction, prestige, Hare Krishna. Something from Yadutama from last night? Yes. He says, Hare Krishna Gurudev, my obeisances to you and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. I had a question from last night. Does following Sri the Prabhupada and discussing his activities qualify as constantly engaging in topics about that servitor and his loving relationship with Krishna? Yes. Hare Krishna. A comment from Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna, Sudevi. She says, Dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Indeed, it is extremely pleasing to hear in your association. You and the assembled devotees are my family, and I appreciate you more than ever. Glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, I feel the same. I need your mercy. I feel the same. Hare Krishna, thank you. It is relishable. They they get together family and they eat a big turkey, and they think that that's a, and watch movies together and drink and they think they're having fun in the middle of a pandemic. Phew. Hare Krishna. More from Krishna Premavati. Hmm. She says in text twenty nine. Why is hope giving pain to Sri the Sanatana Goswami? Because of him feeling so unqualified? Yes. It it transcendental hope. It's it's one is one is one is truly humble and at the same time is ambitious to these are called uh contradictory they're, they're, they seem contradictory, but when they're mixed together, then they cause higher tastes to come into the heart. So hope against hope. That's the way to express it. Prabhupada expresses it sometimes. It's hope against hope. You hope that you can attain something, but you have no hope that you can attain it. And the, and the conflict of those gives you very intense feelings. When those intense feelings are actually felt about Krishna, then they turn into a transcendental feeling that gives ecstasy rather than suffering. Hare Krishna. Something from Bhakta Ben. Bhakta Ben, Haribo. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sorry, it's not related to these verses directly, but I have a nice Sankirtan story from today, from from yesterday, if you'd like to hear. Great, it. let's hear it. I met a lady and asked her, and asked if she had ever been interested in learning about yoga. She told me no, but she had had a lot of struggles in the past few years. As she ex as she examined the Bhagavad Gita, she told me of her struggles with drugs and alcohol. She continued to tell me that her partner had tried to burn down her house while she and her children were inside. She, <laughs> she had saved her children from the fire and just recalling it, she was visibly shooken up. And we think we got problems. Hare Krishna. I was taken aback and told her to quickly follow me to my book trolley. I grabbed 
a copy of teachings of Queen Kunti and opened it to the page with a picture of Queen Kunti saving her family from the house fire and showed her and told her the story. She was absolutely blown away, and so was I. It was very emotional and clear, clearly touched her. I gave her the book and she gave me a donation. I said that her name is the Welsh Queen Kunti. She laughed and left. Hare Krishna. So the feeling that you got when that happened, that's the embrace of Lord Chaitanya. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And that's, yeah, that's causing memories in my heart also. When you go out and distribute these books and share them, with others, then you it, it explodes the feelings of happiness explode in our hearts. There's no there's no feeling like it when you're in front of someone trying to explain a new person and trying to explain, and then especially when you have an experience like that and you can help a person get a proper perspective of what's happening to them properly and, give, and giving them a higher taste that's that's really that's really something and that's what's the crying need of the day the crying need of the day thank you very much for telling that story and keep those stories coming in thank you Something from Vajraloka. Hare Krishna Vajraloka. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for today's reading and your association. I really liked the 28th and 29th verses about the strong hope of the surrendered devotees. At the end of verse 29, it said that Still, O beloved of the gopis, because you bestow your mercy upon the most fallen, I have an unbreakable hope that is constantly in my heart. I just realized you already answered this question. Say that again? I realize you just the, the same question, basically. Yeah. Could you please explain why, what causes this hope in the, what causes the pain in the hope of the, of the devotee? I just described it. I already answered that question. She has more. She says, could you please give some guidance how we can go forward as fast as possible from the purification stage? I can't give guidance how to go as fast as possible. You... you You have to get the attention of Krishna. It's not something that you can do to make yourself go faster. To get fast, you have to surrender completely. If you want to go fast, then you have to surrender completely. You have to give up all your attachments for all anything material and have only the desire to please Krishna in your heart and of course that's a spectrum it's not not that you turn the light switch on and then all of a sudden that comes in that comes you have to go through this process you go through the process you 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 avoid the offenses against the holy name. Because if you chant one holy name without an offense, then you get love of God. So how you get how you go fast is to avoid the offenses. Try to avoid the offenses. By trying to avoid the offenses, you come you go faster. 
by avoiding the fence as you go faster and becoming offenseless, then you attain love of God. Hare Krishna. So we have the third question. Hmm. It says, sometimes we feel some drop of taste in our services and devotional activities before we achi achieve the stage of real taste. Could you please say something about what are these drops of taste? Well, it's described very clearly in Shastra that the first symptom is to get a taste for the service and gradually that taste becomes uh, transformed when it's in relationship with Krishna to a taste for attachment for Krishna personally for his form and his activities and his pastimes that's the that's the path that's the path that's the process and we just heard the Udipana and uh, Alambana you know Krishna is the uh, cause of those feelings and Udipana are the uh, the the uh, the flute, the sound of the flute, different things that are in relationship to Krishna and they bring the mind to Krishna and it's Krishna that, that everything resides in. It all resides in Krishna. So the more attached we come to the form of Krishna, uh, mean, meaning to think of the form of Krishna and the pastimes of, and activities of Krishna and everything in relationship to Krishna, then naturally we go faster and faster and naturally we become attracted to Krishna because he's the most attra attractive. That's why his name is Krishna because he's all attractive. He's attractive to everyone. Some people really hate him and some people really love him but he's attractive to everyone. Prabhupada used to laugh and say there's an eternal debate on whether God exists. God exists? No, God doesn't exist. God exists? No, God doesn't exist. But the subject matter is God. <laughs> So the whole point is to gradually get an attachment for the personal form of Krishna, and the personal qualities and personality of Krishna. And in the beginning, you get a taste for cooking for him, or distributing book, or you know, managing for him, or preaching, all these activities, these services. But those services, as they are done more and more consciously for Krishna, then it turns into attachment for Krishna personally. And from there, all these things, uh, one after another, will awaken in the heart. Hare Krishna. Krishna Premavati says, Thank you for the explanation, Maharaj. It is now clear for me. Hare Krishna. Well, that's nice. I think I'm just waffling. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your questions tonight. They turn the, uh, they always turn the, the, set, the hearing and chanting sessions into something special. Okay, so let's just keep celebrating our Thanksgiving every single day like this in our holiday season. We can have it every day. We don't have to wait for a specific day. Of course, we do have Krishna, Janmastami, Vorpranim, and special days. But hearing and chanting like this, it makes every day a special day. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai Samabeda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo Oh out there in the world this is, this is where it's at Please come and join See you tomorrow Same time, same place Same topic 
Hare Krishna.